to the rain Mouth full of gold, pockets all swole Bad bitch jack and I'm riding 20 foes Swerving through lanes, ducking from the troll City of the heat, but I can make it snow Gotta love it, it's the life I live If you do it, then you gotta do it big Welcome to Urban Land Art Podcast. I'm Steve Gregory, and um, today is special once again. This is episode number three um, of season two, and I've obviously been excited about season two. One, because I've grown, and uh, we made some changes that I think will definitely improve the show. Uh, for starters, we have more wonderful guests. Um, today's artist is from Defiance, Ohio. Um, she is... I would consider a very a very interesting artist for several reasons. One, she is her style is is diverse. Um, I was very impressed with her skill level in several types of, of art, um, and that that means um, that means a lot. Um, it does. I want to welcome Miss Vicky Markell to the air. Thank you, Vicky. Thank welcome you, to Steve. Urban Lands Art Podcast. Thank you. Um, well, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really well. Uh, thank you for being here. I want to mention off and from the beginning that you have a new exhibit, The Golden mm -hmm. Exhibition. Yes. Um, opening reception is this Thursday. Yes, very excited. Working with an organization with I'm very familiar with, Ms. Carolyn Goodrich, mm -hmm. and Art Impact, Artist Impact International. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about, quickly about the exhibit, and then mm -hmm. we'll get into your background. Tell me about the exhibit, because it's kind of fascinating. 81 artists. Um, yes. And how much art exactly are they hanging? They're going to have 111 pieces of artwork from 81 artists representing 12 different countries. So truly an honor to mm -hmm. be invited here to speak about that, as mm -hmm. well as to be invited to show my work at such a prestigious um, exhibition. And we invite all the public to come out. We're going to have live music next Thursday at the Pepco Edison Gallery. The opening reception will be from 5.30 to 8.30, so we hope you can attend. Absolutely. I'll definitely be there. Um, Jay, if you don't mind showing uh, some of our artwork, too, because there's some pieces that I want to get into early. Um, but before, and that obviously for people who are listening to the podcast, um, if you do happen to have a website and you can multitask, excuse me, have have a device that you can get online with, your website is vickymarkell.com, correct? Yes. That's Vicky, V-I-C-K-I? It's actually V Markell, so it's V-M-A-R-C-K-E-L. V Markel dot com. Yes. Um, for people who are watching and you want to see a work, definitely you as well can multitask and log on. Um, I wanted to start with your history, um, a little bit about your history. I know you're an art teacher, mm -hmm. um, as well as a curator. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about your 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 past as far as art mm -hmm. um, and your family life. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're a child, if you weren't painting. What were you doing? <laughs> um, I was very fortunate to be a farm girl. So growing up in the farmlands of Ohio, my parents had a small farm. And so I was privileged to amazing sunsets and open space and the freedom to create an adventure. And they've always been very supportive and loving. So kind of springboarded the inspiration of being appreciative of mm -hmm. what you see around you, seeing the beauty and everyday scenery, and really trying to capture the lives of people and their expressions. So I think I think that's where my love of portraiture developed. Do you feel like your first work was about farm life? Do you remember that being like some of your subject matter or about the animals or about the forest or about the woods or about uh, outdoorsy? Because I have noticed some of your work that that includes mm -hmm. that. Was that some of your first inspiration? Absolutely. As a child, I would always go um, wandering in the woods, um, adventuring, and just fell in love with it. So as a child, tiny sketches, and my mom was always creating mm -hmm. crafts and quilt art. Um, and then when I got to high school, I fell in love with Chuck Close. His portraitures were absolutely amazing, and um, my art teacher was amazing. She would take us on uh, fabulous field trips. We got to see artwork in person. And when Chuck Close, if you're not familiar, do yourself a favor, go Google search him right now. He is amazing. Mm -hmm. He does these very large, intense portraitures um, when he first started his career. And then due to a disabling accident, um, 
medical issue, he can't paint. So he would actually tape a paintbrush to his hands. And so he'd still do large scale portraits, but it was abstract. So it'd be little tiny squares of swirls of paint. Mm -hmm. So when you're up close, it was abstract, non-representational. You don't really know what you're seeing. And then when you step back, it's a perfect face. Mm -hmm. Every highlight, every shadow. Wow. It was such an intense experience. Wow. I um, That leads me to my next question, which is um, you suffered um, an accident yourself um, mm -hmm. that kind of stopped you from painting a car accident. Can you mm -hmm. talk about that? Yes, I was an art teacher in Southern Maryland um, for three years, and unfortunately I was involved in a major car accident. And How old I, were you? Um, I was 20... Eight, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, it happened in 2008, so I had to do the math on that. Mm -hmm. um, but I ended up kind of breaking the left side of my body, and when the car land, uh, the truck landed, I thought I had severed my left arm. And my first thought was, I'm never going to paint again. And that was kind of the catalyst of, if I die tomorrow, do I have any work that represents me that I can leave as a legacy? Mm -hmm. And since then, it's just been the motivating catalyst and the drive and the dedication. And this is after your career had started in art mm -hmm. when this accident happened. Yes. Um, what was your darkest moment um, during that time? I guess even considering rehab, considering you know mm -hmm. when you actually could not paint. Do you remember your darkest moment? Actually, art was the best therapy, and it always has been for me. I, um, I'm i a social butterfly by nature, and being a teacher, you're used to putting on a stage front. But art allows you that therapy, that one-on-one -on -one emotional connection with your work, so you can work through a lot of your issues, mm -hmm. and it just became my escape, and I can create the world that I experience. Do you remember a time when you felt like maybe you wouldn't be able to come back? <laughs> yes. How mm -hmm. was that? It's very um, surreal, and it's a little petrifying at times when you almost feel like you're on the verge of sanity, and you realize, if I go further, will I be able to come back? But at the same point, it's I've been very fortunate to study under amazing people, mm -hmm. and they've inspired me to find that cathartic release through art. Okay. Are you left-handed or right-handed? I'm actually ambidextrous. You're ambidextrous? Yes. My brother broke my right arm. I'm writing him out right now, little Larry. Uh, he broke my right arm when I was learning how to write. Mm -hmm. So my strength is in my right hand, but my fine-tuning then became in my left. So we were discussing earlier... When you were saying you paint double-handed, you yes, literally can paint double-handed. I can paint double-handed. So I just completed a 500-foot mural in Southern Maryland at the Cove at Cobb Island, and it's um, an elevated mural so I was on scaffolding so I'd be jamming out to music on the scaffolding having the paint brushes rocking and rolling I was getting the water texture and it, nothing makes you feel more alive exactly than those experiences yeah I would love to see some some shots of that of mm -hmm. that install um so did your injury make one hand stronger you it seems like you broke your left arm mm -hmm. I mean um, is that the one that was broken the car accident yes I broke the my car left accident. side I actually broke my clavicle oh you broke your clavicle yes. okay mm -hmm. Collarbone, that's a painful, that's a beast of an injury. That it's it a is. A, it's a when injury. I do, like, when I'm crunched for an exhibition <laughs> and I'm pulling sometimes 16 hours in the you studio, oh, definitely. Yes. So, did it help your right arm get stronger? I think so. Because you have to, again, learn how to multitask. So, when you're forced by physical limitations, it makes you more creative. Are you equally comfortable painting with both arms? Not detail. Detail is more my left hand for okay. sure. Okay. Um, so you're coming out of the accident. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember the first portrait you did where you, I'm back? You said, I feel like I'm back. Yes. What was that? It, it was a self-portrait. I had a project um, do, and a lot of what I do with my classroom and my students, I incorporate into my own personal work, and then is shown in exhibitions, and I did a self-portrait. And as um, when you take time away from any um, passion, there's a little bit of a gap where you don't pick up exactly where you left off, and it can mm -hmm. be disheartening. And when I did the portrait and I captured the eyes, then I knew. You okay. Knew. And I was even <laughs> further than what I had previously been, so it's that oh, that's motivation. Great. Oh, that's great. Yes. That's great. I, um, I'm interested to find out you know, exactly as far as teaching. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned something interesting, teaching. You said that you, you, you felt like it was your duty to learn multiple styles of art because you were teaching children mm -hmm. and you wanted to be strong enough to teach them in all aspects, mm -hmm. um, which I felt was different because usually you find, you find art teachers who definitely can still teach art, but mm -hmm. they still have their stick. They have their thing that they paint mm -hmm. constantly. Um, how has that worked out? And do you, find, do you feel like it did make you a stronger art teacher? 
Absolutely. Um, like I said, I was very motivated. I had very inspirational teachers in high school and especially in college. One of my professors, Douglas Healy, he was such an inspiration. He just constantly did. And I really wanted, when I became a teacher, to provide the students the best education. And if I wasn't passionate about every subject matter, whether it's cityscapes, landscapes, portraits, abstract, how could I expect them to be? They're sponges. They gravitate towards that energy and that excitement. So. Right. You're listening to Vicki Markell. Um, she has a new exhibit coming out this Thursday. Actually, the opening reception is this Thursday. Yes. Um, at Pepco Gallery, one of my favorite galleries, mm -hmm. um, actually. And um, this Thursday, open receptions from 5.30 to 8.30? Yes. With, um, we have over 111 pieces of artwork by 81 artists in 12 countries. And we're also going to have live musical performances by downtown. So please make sure to come out and support your artists. And uh, definitely, um, I want to encourage people to um, log on to vmarkel.com because I think it's interesting to, to actually look at the work as you're sitting here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's pretty impactful because your work is great. Thank you. Uh, Jay, if, if I could ask you to show just a couple. There's one that really I'm, I'm really interested in, and it is Hattie Carroll. Mm -hmm. Actually, before I go to Hattie Carroll, um, you've painted for the Pope. Talk to me about that. <laughs> um, yes, I was very, very blessed and fortunate to have the opportunity to po uh, paint for Pope Francis when he came to visit uh, the United States in 2015. So very, very what was surreal. That like? How did that come about? Oh my, and completely surreal. I had just installed some spiders on my website so that way when people did Google searches, my name would pop up. And a lady contacted me and she asked if I could do a painting based off of a picture and could I do it on a crunch deadline. And in art world, that means it was due two weeks ago. So I emailed wow. her right back and through conversations, she said, we want a painting for my boss to give to his boss. And could I do this based off of a picture? They want it to look exactly like the picture, but have my own artist uh, influence in there. And I said, of course. And she gave me a week deadline for 16 by 20 of 13 portraits, 12 American uh, saints that served. or 13 no portraits? Yes, in a 16 by 20. So that is very, very small. Those of you guys that are not familiar. Mm -hmm. um, and it was 13. Um, picture portraits, 12 saints that served in the North and South America as well as the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so the detail was so tiny, I actually had to use a safety pin to get some of the highlights wow. within the eyes. Wow. And a week to do it. So I was going off of, I think, about six hours of sleep that week. I where, was a zombie. Where is that picture um, hanging? Um, that was gifted to Pope Francis. So mm -hmm. um, the Catholic Coalition of the Archbishop gifted him money to support his endeavors as well as the painting. Wow. So he has it in his possession, which I am very honored by. Wow. Um, you mentioned um, earlier, just to take you off the wall a little bit, you mentioned earlier your little brother. Mm -hmm. um, are you the only artist in the family? Um, Besides your mom. I know your mom is the only, <laughs> but as far as siblings. Yes. You're the only one. Mm -hmm. So no competition there. No. What were you um, competitive with your siblings about? Anything? Oh, oh my goodness. For attention, um, sports, my brother and I, it's a shocker that we survived our childhood and what we put my parents through. How did through. he break your arm? Um, so he was going to teach me how to cross the monkey bars and he said he would catch me. And since he's older than me, I thought he would. And he takes off running for the house and I fell on my arm. So. Wow. Yes. I have not nice let him live brother. that down. Yes. <laughs> nice brother. Sounds like, uh, sounds like a lot of little brothers I know. Mm -hmm. can be challenging. Um, again, you are listening to Urban Land Podcast. I'm Steve Gregory. Um, before we take a break, I wanted to ask you about the future uh, mm -hmm. of Vicki Markell. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I know your show's coming up, but all, you also mentioned that you have another exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that, I guess, is curating what you're really interested in, or is it more st being just an artist? Or Because you, you, you seem to be going into the business side of it on another level as well. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see yourself as far as the art world in the future? That is a very interesting question. Um, like I said, I've been very fortunate to have amazing opportunities, such mm -hmm. as this podcast. Thank mm -hmm. you so much oh, for having you. me thank as you, a of guest. Thank you. And some of these opportunities far exceed any dreams or expectations I ever had, especially being a farm girl from Ohio. Um, so I just keep rolling with them and keep giving my all for every opportunity. So I'm not quite for sure what the future will hold, but I imagine it's going to Do you see yourself be... retiring as a teacher? Because for some reason, I don't feel that. 
Um, I do love the classroom environment. I love you my do. students. Mm-hmm. And they are fabulous. They inspire me more than I inspire them, I'm sure. Right. Um, I do love also teaching at galleries and whatnot. So perhaps a little bit more intensive mm-hmm. process. Now, you went to school in my hometown, Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about San Francisco, and it was the <laughs> School of Art, well, mm-hmm. School of Art University yes. in San Francisco? The Academy of Art Academy University of Art. in Academy San Francisco. Yes. And actually, why I selected the Academy of Art University is it was one of the first schools that offered a Master's of Fine Arts online. So I was able to still be a teacher and have my career wow. and then do classes online, which was fascinating because you could watch these painters paint you could watch the video you could rewind it you could pause it Mm -hmm. it really allowed me to get as in-depth with my education as I wanted to so there were times I would paint until 3 a.m. because that's when the assignments were due California midnight time Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the funniest stories is my friend had a wedding in Hawaii and my professor would not give me an extension so I was on the plane to LAX with this huge drawing board drawing this nude figure in charcoal sandwiched in between people and I remember looking over and everybody on the plane is passed out and I dropped my charcoal all over so wow yeah did you get the assignment done I did and I got a B plus and you got a B plus I got a B plus did yes. you ever make a visit to San Francisco not yet not yet mm-hmm. you I, should the art scene is really really fabulous there mm-hmm. and really I would like to meet some galleries. of the instructors that have inspired me in person and tell them thank you and what the, the impact that they had in my life that um that leads me to a question as far as um your Going back again, your favorite teacher. I think it's mm-hmm. interesting to hear teachers' um, thought process on their own teachers. Um, mm-hmm. And you mentioned an art teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, who was your favorite teacher as far as art influence? Ooh, that is a tough one because I've been very fortunate to study <laughs> under amazing people right. and workshops. And I definitely do not want to You can dishonor. give me a list. You can okay. give me a list. You can uh, give me a list. 100% Douglas Feely. He was my professor at Defiance College. And his and I style is completely different. But even after I earned my undergrad, I would still take workshops. I would go back home for the summer. And typical dork, I would take classes during my summer vacation. Mm-hmm. And I would paint with him for like all day for three weeks. And he is just such an inspiring man because he just constantly painted, painted, painting. He didn't need justification from anyone else. He mm-hmm. did his thing. He was passionate, motivated, driven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like, um, and, and mind you, going through the accident, um, you've, you've obviously had some dark times like we all have had. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you create better from melancholy sadness darkness or from joy oh absolutely with melancholy i i wish i could have that same intensity of emotion when it comes to creation process um during happy points and not that i don't paint during such things but by being able to tap into those universal emotions that we all feel. But sometimes, again, we put on those fronts, those facades, and especially as a teacher or in public Mm -hmm. life, you wear this mask where you don't have to do that with the canvas. You can really express the deep, the dark. And unfortunately, sometimes it translates a little too well, and my mom will call me Mm -hmm. up and, are you okay? Mm -hmm. (laughs) She'll see your work that I've done. Wow. Yeah, so... Now, um, speaking of melancholy, Hattie Carroll, mm-hmm. um, African-American woman, 1963. Mm-hmm. She's beat at work mm-hmm. to death. Um, she's a waitress, right? Mm-hmm. Um, working in a restaurant down south, I'm pretty sure she's down south. It was in Baltimore, actually. I was in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me about how you got commissioned to do that piece. And mm-hmm. when Jay gets back, we definitely will play that piece. But I want to talk about that. Because um, Hattie Carroll, is, is a, her story, Bob Dylan wrote a song about her. Mm-hmm. The Wrongful Death of Hattie Carroll. Right. Um, tell me about that piece, how it got commissioned, and the story behind that. Mm-hmm. I've done a, several pieces for the Charles County government at this point, incorporating my students. So my student, okay. I bring my students along and bully them into doing art projects and exhibitions. Wow, so okay. whatever I do, they do. Um, we did a painting of the Nice Bridge, uh, Mallows Bay, and Hattie Carroll came about because they wanted to bring awareness to a wrong and an injustice that happened in our past. And so what they wanted to do is dedicate a road named after Hattie Carroll. So that way we bring light to such um, Mm -hmm. issues and events that happen. And they wanted a portrait done. And then they were going to invite the family to come and have that uh, commemorate the walkway with a reception for her. 
-hmm. And so that was actually very challenging because the portrait that I had was an old black and white picture, very small, so when you blew it up, the pixelations mm -hmm. um, were a bit challenging to make sure that I capture her essence and who she was, and especially when family members are involved and they get to see that in person. With a portrait, it either is that person or it's not. So I really wanted to make sure that I did her justice. Absolutely. Um, Jay, if you don't mind playing the, I'm showing the um, Hattie Carroll portrait. No, the Hattie Carroll one is the African-American woman. Um, just for the people who are watching the simulcast, I think it's important that they see it as we're talking about it. And unfortunately, Hattie Carroll's, there she is. Um, unfortunately, her killer was also not punished. It, he did. He was convicted and was found guilty. Um, however, the sentence was not exactly. Mm -hmm. It was. It was almost nothing, pretty much. Yes, it definitely did not match the crime. And um, how was her family? How did they receive the portrait? Did oh they, my goodness, mm. they were so gracious and kind, and it was so great to see their reaction. And mm -hmm. they, of course, cheered up. And that is you, when you do art. Language art is a universal language. And it touches people in a very emotional and personal way. Mm -hmm. And for them to see that finally something was done, it may not have been justice, but at least it wasn't swept underneath the rug. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're going to take a short break. When we get back, we're going to talk more with Vicki Markell. Um, I want to encourage everyone again to log on to vmarkell.com. That's V-M-A-R-K-E-L. C-K-E-L. Oh. <laughs> no worries. Do that again. It's V-M-A-R-C-K-E-L.com. And um, do that. When we get back, we're going to talk more about our history and um, the upcoming exhibit at the Pepco Gallery. Thanks, Jay.
And we are back live here with Urban Lens, the art podcast. Um, I want to thank, before I forget, uh, the people that are important that make it happen. Jay, who is the board op. Um, Miss Hannah Hoffman, who is um, producer extraordinaire. And also, of course, uh, Listen Vision and Jeremy. Uh, DJ Boom, thank you very much for helping me make this happen. Um, my guest today is Vicki Markell. Um, she is an artist who is from Defiance, Ohio. Mm -hmm. I like the uh, capital emphasis D, on capital Defiance. D, no yes. doubt, capital mm -hmm. D for Defiance. Um, she was educated. Um, part, of, part of education was also at, at a school from my hometown, the Academy of Art. Mm -hmm. University. University mm -hmm. in, in San Francisco. Um, and um, I thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Um, I want to thank Carolyn Goodrich for making mm -hmm. it happen as well. Um, and thank you, Carolyn, as an artist. We cannot thank you enough. That absolutely. lady is such an inspiration. And I swear to goodness, she does not sleep because she, she works is like, very, very she, hard. Very much so. Actually, she is also the curator of the exhibit coming up, the Golden Exhibition, this Thursday, opening night at the Pepco Gallery in D.C., one of the nation's capital's nicest galleries. It should be a very beautiful event. Mm -hmm. um, 80 artists? Um, 81 artists? 81 artists, yes. From? 12 different countries. 12 different countries. With 111 pieces with of art. How many pieces are you installing? I am doing two. You're doing two pieces? Yes. That's powerful territory on those walls. Absolutely, How no pressure. How big are your pieces? Um, one of them is a 36 by 48, and wow. another one is wow. a 20 by 24. Wow. Yes. And the irony is one of the paintings is a night cityscape of people walking in Chinatown. Art pun, wow. an exhibition in Chinatown featuring Chinatown. Is that one of the ones that we have here? Um, I believe so. That's beautiful. Yeah, Jay, if you can yes. show that one, that's, that's mm -hmm. a beautiful piece. And the, the people walking downtown. Um, I mm -hmm. want to ask you, do you know another ambidextrous artist? Oh, that's a really good question. I am not aware. Because I've never met one. Mm-hmm. Um, I do know I've, I've, I've never met one. Obviously, I don't know every mm -hmm. artist in the world. Um, I don't even think I can remember a, a really, like a really known artist that was ambidextrous. You should probably want, I mean, that's it's pretty mm -hmm. talented. It's really special. And see, my instant response to that is I taught ceramics for 12 years. So mm -hmm. I think all ceramics um, you have to use both artists, hands. absolutely, in glass mm -hmm. blowing and three-dimensional sculptures. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Makes sense. Um, talk to me about some of your favorite artists. Oh, my goodness. How do you pick a star in the sky? Yeah, exactly. Um, again, when growing up, I was very influenced by Chuck Close. His portraitures were absolutely amazing and intense and breathtaking. Mm -hmm. um, when I did my graduate studies, I was obsessed with Edward Hopper. His Edward Hopper. His voyeuristic cityscapes, mm -hmm. the isolation, the themes that he touched on, and was able to capture so simplistically, mm -hmm. too. It was just so profound. I, um... Mm -hmm. The art world is, is difficult to navigate sometimes, mm -hmm. um, not only as an artist, but also the, the business side of it, mm -hmm. um, the actual being able to take care of yourself and sometimes your family mm -hmm. through art. It's very challenging. Very much so. One, um, when you were making your original transition mm -hmm. into the business side of it, from mm -hmm. just being, oh, I'm here making paintings, so I want to actually make money and sell my art, mm -hmm. how was that transition? Um, for me, I was very, very fortunate to have amazing people in my life supporting me, and I met this um, gallery, uh, these gallery owners in Colonial Beach, and when I was first starting out, and I was trying to approach galleries and ask them, and they kind of scooped me under their wings and said, oh, bless your heart, child, because some of the work that I had was just sad. I had paintings falling out of frames. I had no clue, but I had the desire and the passion. And so I've been very blessed and fortunate to have Carl and Joyce Thor actually end up adopting me over the years because they have played such a huge role in my life. They are in Colonial Beach, and they just retired. Um, they owned a gallery for 10 years, the Jared Thor Fine Arts Gallery, and they allowed me an avenue to showcase my work. They would pay for me to take workshops with amazing artists like Rob Liberace, Diane Tesler, Sarah Polly, Stephen Walker, wow. just to name a few. And then they would support me and have exhibitions and help me. And like I said, now I truly do call them mom and dad. Absolutely. And they have just been such an inspiration with their kindness, their generosity, their compassion. Mm -hmm. Now for the sake of 
for the sake of artists who are listening who are you know also beginning their process of going professional mm -hmm. talk to me about some of those experiences before you met this couple this wonderful <laughs> couple talk to me about some of those gallery experiences oh, oh my goodness um, I always tell my students one I tell them don't study art if you want to have a happy healthy successful life oh, wow. um, yes okay our teacher yes I know <laughs> I, I try to give them a good start and then if they, I tell them if, if they're really really silly and going to pursue art like I did get used to rejection you will hear no or people will shut the door and not even answer your emails for every 10 rejections you might get one possible opportunity when you get that opportunity you just have to roll with it but you have to build that up of why are you doing this why are you creating what you're doing have that confidence that I'm gonna keep going no matter how many no's I have no matter how many galleries I don't get in and then hopefully everyone else has those people that inspired me and supported me in their own lives. What was um, some of your more notorious rejections? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I still actually have um, the rejection letter when I was applying for MFA programs from a university here in DC that mm. I was not accepted into their MFA program. And mm. I actually have that in my studio. You still have it? I do. Is it's, it framed? No, <laughs> is no it, I didn't is it make it. With paint? <laughs> it should be, yes. But it was kind of that motivation of, mm -hmm. okay, I'll show you. You know, so right. that, yeah. Um, so do you think that um, this couple that adopted you, what are their names, their names again? Uh, Carl and Joyce Thor. Carl and Joyce Thor. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if, if they hadn't been the couple, it would have mm -hmm. happened for you anyway. Um, oh, you're, very, you. you're a talented artist. It would have happened for you anyway. But talk to me about how that, that whole process that they mm -hmm. put you through turned making you into a professional artist. Oh, um, my talk, talk to me about the learning curve. Oh my goodness, there are so many avenues I could go with that um, as far as the professional aspect. Like I said, I kind of had that passion, that intensity, that drive, but no skill set. So I didn't know how to framework, I didn't know how to label, I didn't know how to price it, how to approach galleries, and then on a more personal level, how to handle the stress of that, how to multitask. So Joyce and I would often go for brunch and she was, uh, she worked to NASA at a very um, prestigious position and so she was able to talk to me about the demands of having a very successful career and being able to multitask mm -hmm. and to constantly be on and how you handle that stress on a personal level so like I said she's such an inspiration so when you met the, the, um, the Thor family mm -hmm. what were you doing professionally um, being a teacher. So you were still teaching? Yes. And actually, almost all of my successes are due to my students. One of my students, um, she was my assistant. She had been in my classes for two years. Her parents were photographers, and they showed at the gallery. Wow. So they said, why don't you come spend the weekend with, uh, with us in Colonial Beach? And again, I'm thinking art teacher spending mm -hmm. the weekend with the family okay that's might be a little weird mm -hmm. but they kind of adopted me and like here it introduced me to this wonderful supportive community of artists including carolyn goodrich wow mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. That's how you met Carolyn That's Goodrich. That's how I met Carolyn Goodrich. And I first met her because I took a workshop with her and she was teaching us how to do encaustic painting. Her encaustic work is incredible. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> emotional when you see her work. I, I'm right. not a big fan of abstract work, but you can't help but have an emotional response to her work. Right, Carolyn, mm -hmm. she's fantastic with that. So I um as, as far as um again, I want to just talk about personal development because that's mm -hmm. a part of Urban Land Podcast. It's kind of helping artists discover their way through making money by this because it, through art because it's 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 again like i said it's tough to navigate there are a lot of Very starving so. literally starving artists mm -hmm. is the starving artists like you said you even tell your students don't be silly enough to pursue a career in art mm -hmm. um do you remember the first piece you sold Ooh, that is a good i do it was at the um gallery in colonial beach and i paid to be part of this exhibition so basically if you paid 30 dollars, they said it was juried but which is cheap yes absolutely Nowadays, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i remember we uh my friends and i we had a picnic on the beach and we talked about how surreal would it be if your work sold or you could actually be an artist at the gallery and Seven years later, I was one of their permanent artists, did um, a summer internship where I was their assistant curator, and it's been amazing. Wow. So mm -hmm. they even helped you, escorted you to your first sale. Oh, absolutely. Wow. And it was at that show, and that really 
Uh, you don't want to be a sellout. You want to do what you do, but there is a certain validation that somebody is going to spend your, their money on your work because ultimately our brand as artists and performers is luxury entertainment. It's not a necessity. And as you said, in economies where mm -hmm. it may not be uh, very successful, it is challenging for people to make ends meet, let alone have additional money for something that's not really going to do anything. You mm -hmm. just look at it. So you really have to be able to create that emotional response in your viewers that they have to have your work. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of I've gotten a um, I've gotten a sense from you, um, Vicky, that what you how you are with your students like what mm -hmm. you're trying to say to your students as far as educating them mm -hmm. um, in this art world but what are you trying to say through your art Ooh, I guess if I could say anything is just enjoy the experience there are moments in most of my work um, even if it, even if it's not commission based, is I will be outside, I will be with friends, and there's just a particular moment. You're walking in the streets of Chinatown, or you're sitting on a dock, and you just see this moment, and the you hear sounds, and the light seems to dance off the water. The shadows create an interesting interplay, and you can smell, and it's just exciting. And then you have your own emotional experience with that piece and I just feel so fortunate to have these experiences and to appreciate the beauty that's around us and I want to intensify that. Wow. You um you talked about one of your favorite cities um is London. Mm -hmm. And I find that interesting being an artist from De from Ohio, <laughs> from Defiance, Ohio. You yes. can see so you said a country girl from Ohio. Absolutely. Um, why London and what was your time like in London? Oh, why London? Um, I think because London holds true to the beauty of the architectural history. It's, the architecture is amazing. Uh, even the fences. I mean, the, the nuances, the subtle details mm -hmm. and the beauty in the iron fence for them to have that and then there's this energy with the city that it almost feels alive and especially London has a little bit of an edge a little bit of like street cred mm -hmm. and so it's just great and going back to Hopper as a farm person you're physically isolated mm -hmm. from people so you don't get that interaction and then moving to more urban areas like dc where you have thousands of people in such close proximity but we're almost conditioning ourselves to ignore people to not look at them to not see them and so it's shocking you can have such isolation when you're physically surrounded by so many people mm -hmm. do you find that the creatives in london were different than those you encountered here in the States or mm -hmm. are all artists just, just as crazy everywhere? <laughs> well, I do think artists are crazy everywhere. Um, I do think they allow themselves to be more raw and more truthful. So they have no problem telling you exactly what they think and expressing that. Where I feel in America, we're a bit more reserved. Mm -hmm. Give me an example of that. Um, for example, I feel um, when you go to Europe in general, I feel that they're more... Um, accepting and understanding of just art in general, especially being a high school art teacher, we kind of have this very conservative, oh, we can't look at a nude figure. We don't want to explore real issues. We like to put a band-aid on things. Where in Europe, they're much more appreciative and they don't have our hang-ups so much. Now, um, as, as a woman artist, obviously, you know, I also um, in season two, wanted to bring social issues into the fold when I bring artists on. I, I really am trying to make your message just as important as your craft um, Thank with, you. with this season. So with that being said, with the, with the Me Too movement and how it's impacted women across the board, creative women are standing up and you know they have a bigger voice and they're helping the youth. Um, do you feel that that movement, even if, you, even if it's something you hadn't thought about before, do you feel like the new energy that women are feeling has affected your artwork? Definitely. And that's always something I've been very conscientious of because when you study, and of course most of your influences growing up are from your educators, uh, most of the teachers for average subjects were women, very nurturing, caring, but in the art world it was predominantly male professors. Absolutely. And even more so in the professional art world Absolutely. because we're still held to the standard of if you're a woman, you're expected to be married, have a family where gentlemen are Do you think so that you think it's that thought out? 
I do. Wow. Um, very much so. And it's because most of the successful male artists that I know, their wives or significant others are also their marketing people. So they allow them that avenue to create while they take care of the business aspect mm -hmm. for them, where women are still expected in this day to wear so many hats. And it's very challenging sometimes. Wow. Um, I never thought about that. So you, you still would have to be the professional artist and as well as the caregiver and, mm -hmm. and the person at home and, and doing a lot of work. That's interesting. I think that um, that dichotomy was dealt with by Frida Kahlo, mm -hmm. one of my favorite artists. Um, and she was very much so um, mm -hmm. stood up against that. It's an, it's an issue in the art world um, as far as women breaking through mm -hmm. on a curated level mm -hmm. um, as well as an art level. Um, and I love, uh, I'm currently reading my faraway one, which is the letters Georgia O'Keeffe and Alfred Stieglitz exchange. And it's so fascinating to hear her independent voice, even back then, because she felt those types of societal pressures and mm -hmm. the fact that you often have to be very independent as a woman to say, this is what I'm going to do, unapologetic, without, a, without defending or justifying this is my career, and I'm going to keep moving forward and pursuing these opportunities, even if that means I don't sleep or I don't have this, that, you know? Mm -hmm. Tell me about the, the, um, the makeup of, of teachers, art mm -hmm. teachers. Um, I must say that the art teachers that I've had on the podcast since I've started have been all women. Mm -hmm. So is that more of a balanced profession for, in the art world, mm -hmm. teaching? Teaching, I would definitely give you more women, but professors, that higher level in the academic chain, I would say... So it would, changes in college. I think so. At least that's what my perception has been. And mm -hmm. granted, of course, we're making wonderful strides forward, and I want to see the momentum and keep going with that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, um, again, I want people to check out our website, uh, vmarkel.com. And you want to do the spelling for me again? Oh, yeah. So V M A R C K E L dot com. No worries. My students What's your Twitter? Misspell. What's your Twitter or your Instagram? And your Instagram? Uh, same. V Markel dot com. And Instagram is V Markel? Mm hmm. V Markel. Okay. V Markel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely all the millennials. Uh, check out our work mm -hmm. at V Markel on Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, your Facebook. What is your mm -hmm. Facebook? Is Vicky, V I C K I, Markel, M A R C K E L, Fine Artist. Um, I, again, you're, how long have you been working with Carolyn and um, Art Impact? Ooh, Carolyn, and forgive me for this. I'm not quite for sure when she got that started. It was a few years ago, mm -hmm. and luckily I had known her on a personal level as well when she first had the vision for Art Impact. So I've seen it grow and develop, and over the years she's had amazing opportunities. Two years ago we had an exhibition at the American Embassy in Rome, so it gave a lot of artists the opportunity to show their work internationally. And like I said, she is just such a passionate force Definitely. in helping and supporting other artists. And that, you know, I asked you that because part of being successful in art mm -hmm. is having that type of representation, is mm -hmm. making those kind of connections, building those bridges. Um, and a big part, part of it is also, you know, your own motivation. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm interested in, like, what, how do you, because... Obviously, since I've had this podcast, I've, I've kind of learned a lot about what it's like to be an artist. I'm not an mm -hmm. artist, but I do know that part of what I learned is establishing collectors, your own personal mm -hmm. collectors is key mm -hmm. um, to success. I mean, for even, for no matter if you're a small artist to the biggest, you mm -hmm. have to develop a core of people that like your work, mm -hmm. that buy your work, who you respect, so you know it's going to be hanging properly, mm -hmm. being seen, um, because... Artists consider their art their babies. I've also learned that. Mm -hmm. So as far as the collector piece, developing that side of people who buy your work, mm -hmm. um, talk to me about that a little bit. Um, and again, a wonderful thank out to Carl and Joyce Thor, as well as Carolyn Goodrich, um, for introducing me to that side of the business and introducing me to people that would, in fact, become collectors of my work. And Carolyn does amazing workshops and teaches artists, whether they're starting or halfway through their career, um, how to gain collectors and really understand marketing, branding, understanding what your brand is, your target audience, what your vision is, and making sure that you still hold true to yourself while being able to sell your product. 
Wow, I need to take Carolyn's class for, for my, for my <laughs> yes. business. And also from a personal <laughs> standpoint, you leave there and you are so energized and <laughs> right. motivated. You're like, I'm going to take over the art world. Right. <laughs> um, so the show again is this Thursday? Yes. Pepco Gallery. You got it. Do you know any of the artists that you're working with? I do. Several of my colleagues are going to be having their work on display. And so too many to list. So please, you can um, access the link on my webpage, bmarkel.com. You can also go to Art Impact International and have um, a link for the digital invitation because like I said we have over we have uh, 81 phenomenal artists that are showing 111 pieces and we really hope you can come out this Thursday enjoy the live music from downtown absolutely mm -hmm. um, now besides before we wrap up besides painting for the Pope <laughs> um, which is I can't imagine there being a, a bigger <laughs> highlight than that um, what would you consider one of your, your highlights of your career so far Oh my goodness, they have been so many. Hattie Carroll is amazing. <laughs> Painting for the Pope is amazing. Mm -hmm. But besides those two, anything we're missing? Oh, oh my goodness, there are so many. Anytime I can provide students the opportunity to experience success and have their work on display. So over the years, I've had solo shows for them where I had a solo show and I was like, well, let's have my students. So they were given the opportunity to show their work at a professional gallery, at a high school level. We've had their work in government buildings. So wow. to be able to show them what it really means. So they will call me up, they're like, I, I, what do I do? The frame is wrong. The label is wrong. I'm like, these are the behind the scenes You are struggles. a hell of a high school art teacher. Thank you. I would like to, <laughs> maybe we can have people across the country sending kids to your high school. What's the name of your high school? My high school is Henry Lackey High School in Indian Head, Maryland. Henry Lackey High School. Henry E. Lackey. Henry E. Lackey yes. High School. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, is that art department did you start that art department? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Actually, it was funny. When I first got there, we had four art teachers, oh, and I always said we were kind of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mm -hmm. because my department chair, Brian Donahue, he was the Leonardo. He was an older gentleman and just very chilled. He was our leader, and so we all kind of had our personalities mm -hmm. and the idiosyncrasies that go along with it. But I had an amazing principal, Ms. Uh, Dr. Jimmy Short, um, who just inspired me, and anything that I wanted to do he's like Markel how much is it we ain't got no money and then finally he's like what do I have to say to get you out of my office and I was like oh we well, need to go on this field trip we need to do this we need to and he supported everything right. so I was truly honored unfortunately he passed away two years wow. ago from a heart attack and I did a portrait for him to give to his family and I was that was very cathartic because I was in the studio and I had a day to do a portrait of a man who was so influential and supportive. And it was really, I almost felt like I was having conversations with him because I was thinking, I can't complete this painting in this time. I can't do him justice. He's like, Mark Hill, all those times I gave you money, all those times I supported you. you. And, oh, yes. Like, this is what you were conditioned for, <laughs> what I supported you. So it was very, very a wonderful opportunity to give back to a family for a man that gave so much to Lackey High School. Well, thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. It's I truly a pleasure. It. Vicki Markell, um, exhibit opens this Thursday. Um, again, it's called Golden Exhibitions. She's mm -hmm. doing it with Art Impact USA with Miss Carolyn Goodrich. 81 artists. 81 artists. 12 countries. 12 countries. 100. 101 pieces. 111. You were so close. 111 yes. pieces. <laughs> um, we'll be back next week with more Urban Land Podcast. I'm Steve Gregory, and um, thank you for listening. I'll see you then.